the Dragon Con. Am I going the right way? It's that one. I know it. How's it going everyone? Today I am doing an event report from Robot Battles 64 held at Dragon Con 2017 on September 3rd and 4th. Robot Battles of Dragon Con is a little different than a standard two-day event because what they call micro battles are held the first day on Sunday, which is the ants and three-pounders. So that day I competed with my three-pound bot, Demon Spawn. And then the second day are the 12 and 30-pounders, which they consider the main event. And instead of being a fully enclosed combat arena, it is more of a tabletop sumo type event with no high kinetic energy spinners or anything like that allowed. And in that one, I competed with my redone version of F-13, this time dubbed the Florida Pool Noodle Massacre. Since having the machete thrown at my face by Shaboom Box was terrifying enough last time, I decided it was probably a good idea to switch out the machete for a less dangerous weapon. And my dumb idea was a pool noodle, which ended up being really ironic for reasons we'll get into here shortly. So first up was Demon Spawn, and unfortunately, because Robot Battle is a single elimination, I only got one fight in with this robot. And before I get into the fight, I'm just going to do a quick rundown of what changed between the last version of Demon Spawn and this version. And it's not a lot outside of the fancy new paint job for it. I did add Lexan bits to the front here to cover up the titanium wedge panels. Everything's a little more aligned. Everything's a little more flat and stable. There's less flex in this frame this time. The piece of metal back here that holds the two sides of the weapon mount together is now a thicker piece of aluminum less prone to warping which i think was one of my big problems last time and the back plate was replaced with uhmw to match the sides since that held up very, very well to the horizontal spinners that were kind of the bane of my existence at Supercon. But beyond that, more or less the same robot. I didn't have time to make new flip-flop tires, so I did put light flights on it. Round one, I got a buy, and I got to sit and wait knowing very well my most likely opponent was a robot that took me out last year at Robot Battles, Noodles. So that's Dale Hetherington's really nasty push bot. I think it has custom brushless drive. It has pool noodle tires coated in latex text that give it a ton of grip and the fight started off okay for me i was having some drive issues because the robot battles floor is very rough i don't really have a lot of ground clearance going forward with the wedges but i got my weapon up to speed once again still having some issues with this weapon getting it going at first but once it goes it goes and i got a pretty nice hit on him launched him up in the air but he was able to push me around quite a bit eventually he got me over towards the front corner of the arena and one of my wheels just dropped off i guess i must have forgotten to tighten the hub sufficiently because the entire assembly just popped right off the side of the robot. So that definitely left me crippled against the push bot. He almost got me out of the push out. I managed to get away from it. I think I ended up on top of the hazard plate in the middle, which was like a grinding disc in the center of the ring. And eventually got back to that same first corner. I cranked the weapon up to high speed to try to help compensate for my lack of drive and just kind of let the vibrations of the robot move it around a little more like I had at Supercon. And one of his wheels ended up popping off and I hit a second wheel and it got completely jammed up into my weapon. Ended up taking a chunk out of the pool noodle, but the real problem was the latex around it. You can see here, this is the wheel that came off. And this is the latex coating. What it actually had happened is it had gotten snagged onto one of the nuts on the side of the disc. And the wheel itself had kind of become trapped here on the side. But I think I would have maybe been able to get out of it, but the latex completely seized up my weapon. It actually got down into the bearings, and the bearings were basically shot on this thing. I think it actually got latex into the rollers inside and just completely crapped them out. There was a little bit of controversy around whether this was okay or not. It did happen to quite a few spinners that happened to get tangled up in these wheels. But Robot Battles has a very loose set of rules. The rules are two pages tops. They have been that way for quite a long time. So it's really up to the event organizers to decide if this is entanglement or not, and they went with not. So that's a decision that you have to go by. And even if I'd been allowed to remove the wheel from my disc, it still wouldn't have worked. The other thing that happened if I pull the weapon system apart is that these bolts here on the side I think must have been raised up just enough, or something else happened that made the side of this pulley 
dig into the side of the weapon mount. So you can see in here, there's actually a bolt sized gouge made into the weapon mount here. So when I went to remove the weapon, it was actually physically jammed in there. And I think what happened is one of these bolts came out just enough. Somehow they don't, I mean, they're pretty much flush here. I don't think I tightened them up, but something must've happened that made it gouge into the side of the weapon mount and locked it up as it was moving. So yet another reason why this would never have worked. No real damage, of course, to the robot outside of that gouge and the bearings. I opted not to participate in the rumble because I am planning to take this to Spark Fun ABC in less than a month, and I figured I'd rather save as much of the robot as possible. Rumbles can be complete chaos, and if something goes wrong, I can't really remove it from the arena. So I figured I'd just sit that one out and let the robot be in better shape to move forward. So I had posted online that after the whole deal with the pool noodle, and I wasn't the only one that succumbed to that whole thing over the course of the first day, that nobody was going to believe me that I already had a pool noodle themed robot planned for day two. So I showed up for the larger battles with the Florida Pool Noodle Massacre, and basically got the reaction I was expecting. People just assuming I threw it together the night before, which, I mean, I can't blame them. It kind of looks like I did. But obviously I had this most of this robot for F-13. The biggest difference here besides the Pool Noodle are these little arms here at the front. These were intended to be there for Supercon, but I ran into some issues and couldn't get them finished in time. So this was supposed to be the wedge. If we're looking at F-13 basically being a clone of the old robot Overkill from the early days of BattleBots, it would have had a full wedge here in the front, of course, with these arms to support it. And I brought the robot with the full wedge intact, but I found out that because the arena for robot battles are the crappiest stage risers I think that the hotel has, and they keep them just for robot battles, from my understanding. The metal edges that kind of hold the carpet pieces in place stick up really high, and my wedge just dug right in there and got jammed up when I was test driving it. So, removed the wedge, decided to just go with these arms, which actually don't even have like a flush wedge cut on the end of them. They're just actually kind of like at a 45 degree angle to the ground, but I figured that was good. It would let me do something, but not quite be sticking into the floor all the time. And to add irony to irony, my first fight was up against Dale again with his 12 pounder T-Boner. And once again, I had a buy, so I got to watch this thing in action yet again. I'd seen it in years prior, but I gotta be reminded of how horrific this robot is before having to go face it. But there was a little bit of luck in that because I was reminded through the announcing that T-Boner is somewhat autonomous. It will automatically target its opponent, kind of similar to Chomp in BattleBots Season 2, and it's electrically powered flipper is actually triggered by a sensor, I guess at the top of the flipping piece. So when a robot gets in its kind of jaw area or if it gets flipped upside down, it will automatically trigger this weapon and flip its opponent. I realized going into this that I might have the perfect design to go up against that because I have a lot of hinged flaily bits that don't really matter if they get flipped. So going into the fight, I tried to employ that strategy. I tried to stick the little wedge beams into his flipper. I tried to smack it with the pool noodle and I actually got my desired result. He flipped, missed anything important on my robot and threw himself up into the air and I was able to get underneath him. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get enough pushing power to get him off the stage. I think I was kind of jammed up on some of those floor seams again, but my strategy worked. Eventually he did flip me so that I ended up right on the side of the arena and I wasn't paying enough attention. I kept trying to go forward and drove myself that last inch or so off of the platform, but this is best two out of three. So I got back on, did the same thing again. I actually got a really good triggering of his weapon, got underneath him, and I kept trying to use that strategy, but eventually he was able to toss me off the side of the the arena yet again. But I was pretty proud of how well the Florida Pool Noodle Massacre did in that fight. I felt like I was able to pretty effectively use my design to my advantage despite not being able to pull out a win. So basically went and watched the rest of the fights for the day and then at the end of the day they had two different rumbles. Basically they were trying to guarantee everybody got to fight at least three times if they could. So you got your one single elimination match. If you lost your first match you got to do the losers rumble and then there was a every surviving bot rumble after that. So the losers rumble. I actually managed to stay on the stage for most of the battle. For whatever reason, I was kind of losing control at some point. I think my antenna kind of lost its shielding and it was touching one of the drive motors and that was causing interference. So the robot started kind of doing things on its own towards the end, but I was able to use the thwackbot function a little more, slap the pool noodle around on random robots, including camera bot and a Roomba, like an unmodified 
just plain old Roomba, which was hilarious. But eventually I got towards the edge. I had one of those control lost moments and the robot basically drove itself to its own doom. The final rumble was a ton of fun just because there were a ridiculous number of robots on the stage. I kind of went out doing the same thing, just trying to smack robots, be obnoxious. And eventually I got stuck up against another robot. I can't remember the robot's name, but it had a bunch of slow speed saw blades that spun on the front of it. And we kind of got into a pushing match. We were semi evenly matched, honestly. Honestly, but then eventually I ended up getting pushed off the edge and carnage just continued for the rest of the match while the remaining bots were slowly removed from the play field. So not a successful run in the least, but as far as Florida Pool Noodle Massacre goes, I'm actually kind of happy how it did. I didn't expect it to be competitive in the least, but I had a lot of fun with it. I love driving this robot, and even though Thwack bots aren't exactly high tech or super cool, I really just enjoy this robot for the stupidity that it is. Because there's no real weapons, there's not much damage to speak of, but I did notice that this front edge that was going up against the saw blade spinner does have some nice little cuts in it. Saw blades, of course, being much better at taking out UHMW than big KE spinners anyway, but that's not really a big deal. None of these are particularly deep or anything like that. And it's half inch thick UHMW, so I mean, that's a scratch really. So in terms of what's next, both these robots are getting tweaked for their next event. As I mentioned with Demon Spawn, I'm taking both of these guys out to Spark Fun AVC in Colorado in mid-October. So I don't really have a whole lot of time to get these guys back up and running again. Florida Pool Noodle Massacre is of course going back to F-13. I'm gonna fix up the machete, get a spare going. I'm gonna get the wedge actually being a wedge instead of two little spikes. And I'm upgrading the robot to use lipos instead of the crappy drill batteries it's been using. It's actually going to save over a pound of weight on this thing, which is ridiculous. I kind of forgot how amazing lipolys can be in terms of weight savings. And the pack is much smaller as well. Demon Spawn isn't going to change a whole lot. I'm going to make some modifications. I'm going to try to see if I can get any extra weight over the wheels to help with traction. And I did order a new weapon blade for it. Instead of using this multi-piece assembly where it's aluminum discs sandwiching steel plates, it's actually going to be a solid stainless steel blade. So hopefully that will be done in time for the next event. Fortunately, it should be a pretty easy swap over between the two. There's not really a whole lot to do to these robots. Honestly, my biggest concern is figuring out all the things I need to do to get these on a plane safely or get them shipped safely so that they arrive in Colorado when I do and don't get destroyed by a bomb disposal unit or some crap like that. But I am super excited for that event. But before I get sidetracked on what's coming in the future, definitely gotta once again say how much I enjoy robot battles. That event is always a lot of fun, whether I do well or not. It's a blast. It's goofy as all hell which is great. It gives me an excuse to go to Dragon Con every year, which on its own is a ton of fun. And it's awesome to see builders that I don't normally see at other events. It's been one of my favorite things. I've traveled a decent amount for robot fights this year, probably more than I ever have in a single year before. And it's been really neat to get to meet builders from other places and compete against people who aren't just in my local group. Even though I love competing against my local Florida builders and everything, it's definitely fun to go compete with some other people every now and then. So that's it for this one. I'm going to go get to work and get these guys up and running for the next one. See ya.